Hey guys, my name is Rachel and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here, welcome to my channel. So the case that we are going to be going over today is one of those cases that just simply does not have a lot of information. I spent a lot of time reading different articles hoping that I could find some background information about her or you know things about her life or things that she liked to do, things like that, but pretty much every article that I read said the exact same thing. Thing. So this will be a bit of a shorter video because again, there's just not a lot of information, but whether there's a lot of information on this case or not, her case deserves to be shared and she deserves justice. So with that being said today, we are going to be talking about the unsolved disappearance of Kiera Coles. Kiera Coles was born September 24th, 1991 to parents Karen Phillips and Joseph Coles, and she lived on the south side of Chicago in Illinois. She was described as very assertive yet caring, and she was very close with her family. She spoke to her mother pretty much every day and always called her to check in. After graduating high school, she had a couple of different jobs, but eventually landed at a job at the United States Postal Service as a letter carrier. She was a very dedicated and reliable worker who showed up on time, worked hard, and barely, if ever, missed a day without calling in. When she was 20 years old, Kira met a man named Josh Simmons who also worked for USPS and the two began dating. They seem to have a pretty good relationship for the most part, but there were some issues that the two faced. Apparently, there was some infidelity problems on Josh's end and he also had some children from a previous relationship. Both of these things put a bit of strain on the relationship, but nonetheless, the two dated for six years before Kira got pregnant when she was 26 years old. When Kira found out that she was pregnant, by all accounts, she was pretty happy and excited. She had always wanted to have a child with Josh, and now it was actually happening. She had a very stable job with USPS. She had just moved into a new place. She just got a new car, and everything in her life was very exciting. However, it was also around this time that she found out that her boyfriend Josh had actually gotten another woman pregnant. This other woman also happened to work for USPS, so their relationship was pretty strained and of course this caused a, quite a bit of trouble in their relationship as you can imagine. So because of all of these issues, the two were arguing a lot and they were fighting a lot. So, you know, as you can imagine, you're excited, you're pregnant and you're ready to have a child and then you found out that the man that you were with got another woman pregnant. So of course you can imagine how awful that must have felt for Kira. So on Monday and Tuesday, October 1st and 2nd in 2018, Kira had taken those days off of work. So on October 2nd, Kira was just visiting a friend. The two hung out for a while, for a couple hours, had a little bit of fun, but around 5 p.m. that evening, she had to leave for a WIC appointment. At this point, she was three months pregnant. Now, also on that day, Kira had called her mother, as she always had, and Kira was asking her about some advice for a certain product. Kira's mother said she seemed extremely happy on this phone call, not in any sort of distress. She said that Kira was a little bit emotional, but she was extremely happy because she was going to hear her baby's heart beating and she was just so ready for that. So by all accounts, everything seemed fine that day. However, I don't know if she actually made it to her appointment or not, but after she left her friend's house that evening, no one really knows what happened to Kira. After this, she had never been seen again. So on Wednesday, October 3rd, Kira's mother realized that she hadn't really heard from her daughter all day, so she tried calling her. Now, she did try calling her that morning, but she assumed that she was at work and that's why she didn't answer. She called again that afternoon, but again thought maybe she was at work or maybe her phone was dead, something like that. So then she called again that evening and again, she didn't answer but Kira's mom didn't really think too much of this because she thought that her phone could just be dead and you know maybe she forgot her charger or lost her charger something like that so Kira's mother just kind of went on with her day maybe feeling a little bit concerned but she wasn't in a full-blown panic yet however there were a few things about this day in particular that 
were a little bit strange. So it had been reported that Kira actually called into work to take the day off on October 3rd, but we're not exactly sure if she actually did call off. We know that the USPS has a rule saying that their employees have to call off the day before if you're gonna be taking the day off, but I don't know if she actually called the day before or if people maybe just assumed she did that because that was the rule. People are questioning this because she had already previously called off Monday and Tuesday, so they don't know why she would need to take a third unplanned day off. So this was just a little strange. So the next strange thing that happened on this day that threw a lot of people off for quite a while was that on surveillance video, there was a woman who was thought to be Kira walking down the street past Kira's car dressed in her USPS uniform, but then walking out of frame. This was weird to people because Kira had called off of work that day, yet they thought that they saw Kira on security video in her uniform just walking past her car for some reason. The woman in the video seemed like it was her, but it turns out that it actually was not her. So for a while, people were confused on this behavior and they thought that they saw Kira walking on security footage. This gave people a little bit of hope that they actually saw her and that she was, you know, alive and well after her appointment, but it wasn't actually her. So it's really frustrating because we don't know much about October 3rd and we don't know where she went after her appointment. So October 4th rolled around and still no one had heard from Kira at all. Her mother started calling again, but this time the calls were just going straight to voicemail. At this point, Kira's mother got a gut feeling that something was wrong. This entire thing just did not feel right to her. So at this point, she had called police over to Kira's apartment for a wellness check, thinking that Kira was probably there since she had seen her car there. She thought that maybe Kira was sleeping or maybe sick. I mean, she was three months pregnant, so it's not crazy to think that she just was not feeling very good. So when police got there, they found her car, but her car had her purse, her cell phone, and she had a packed lunch inside, but Kira was nowhere to be found. So this is when Chicago Police Department started their search alongside the FBI and the US Postal Service Inspection Agency. They started questioning anyone who was believed to have been seen in her final days before she went missing, including her boyfriend, Josh. Kira's mother said that she didn't think that Josh was involved. She said that the two were very excited about Kira's pregnancy and that they were even thinking of naming their baby after Josh if it were a boy. She said that she knows he will be a suspect, but that she doesn't want to single anyone out and she doesn't want people just jumping to the conclusion that it's Josh. However, the more time that goes by, the more suspicious Karen is getting about Josh. She said that while she never wanted to point fingers at Josh in the beginning, she hasn't heard anything from him since the day that police did the wellness check. She said that she hasn't seen him around town. He hasn't tried to contact her absolutely no effort on his end to call her or talk to her or see how this investigation was going. So now she's thinking that maybe he really did have something to do with this. Kira's due date was April 16th and she's still missing. For a while, she was considered an endangered pregnant woman, but at this point, she would have had her child. So now it's a missing woman and her baby. At this point, her case is at an absolute standstill. They have been searching, doing numerous interviews, have received tons of tips, but nothing led them to Kira and her baby. Police said that Josh remains a person of interest in this investigation since, you know, he may have been one of the last people to see Kira, but they won't say anything beyond that. The United States Postal Inspection Services has put out a $28,000 reward for any information about Kira's case and stated at this point that anything is possible. As of right now, the reward is at $46,000 and includes money pulled together from the USPS, a Chicago-based loan company called Sir Finance, and the local letter carriers union. Investigators have said that based on the amount of time that Kira has been gone without posting on social media or being in contact with anyone, they believe that there is foul play involved in this case. Investigators also said that at the beginning, tips were absolutely pouring in 
but at this point, they really are not receiving any tips. They said that they've been searching, holding on to some information, but they just don't know enough. They need more information and absolutely anything helps. Kira is described as being black with a medium complexion. She has black hair and brown eyes. She's about five foot four and weighs about 125 pounds. If you have any information whatsoever, no matter how big or small the tip might seem, I urge you to call the Chicago Police Department at 312. 747-8274 or you can call the U.S. Postal Inspection Service at 1-877-876-2455. So that's literally all of the information I have in this case. I know it's incredibly frustrating and sad that we really do not know much about Kira or the circumstances surrounding her case. Because of this, it's very hard to come up with reasonable theories, but I still want to go over a few theories using the information that we do have. So the first and most obvious theory is that her boyfriend had something to do with this. I think this is the theory that most people tend to lean towards. So of course we know that he had gotten another woman pregnant along with Kira and he had other children from previous relationships as well. We also know that according to Karen Phillips, he hasn't bother to try and reach out to her at all. It's possible that Josh was just frustrated and didn't want any more children, or maybe him and Kira had gotten into a fight that was so intense that in the heat of the moment, something happened. Now, I don't know a lot about Josh or his and Kira's relationship, and I won't pretend that I know a lot about them, but I do think that it is a little bit worrisome that he hasn't tried to reach out to Kira's mother. I mean, no matter how rocky someone's relationship might be, this is a woman that he dated for six years. You'd think that he would try to reach out to Karen to talk to her or maybe help out with the investigation in any way that he could, but he just couldn't be reached. I also know that news outlets had tried to contact him as well and they couldn't get a hold of him either. To me, if your girlfriend, again, no matter how rocky the relationship may have been, if your girlfriend went missing, you'd think that you would do anything to get exposure to her case, get her face out there, get her information out there. But then again, on the flip side, if you know that you didn't do anything and people are accusing you and you know maybe you tried to talk to news outlets but they just want to talk about how you may be involved, it makes sense why you wouldn't want to talk to anyone for that reason. But still, using the information that we have, it just doesn't seem like he's been doing anything that he can do to help find Kira, which does look pretty sketchy if you ask me. But again, this is going off of very small amounts of information. We don't know him or Kira's relationship, anything like that. So. Take what I'm saying right now with a grain of salt. The next theory is that Kira may have been taken by a complete stranger who did something to her, whether it be a human trafficker or maybe she was a victim of opportunity. We know that she left her friend's house and was just never seen again. We don't know anything other than that. Now, I don't know if police had looked into her phone records to see if maybe she had been in contact with her boyfriend that night or if she had been in contact with anyone else that night. But for the sake of this theory, let's just assume that they did look into phone records and they did see that she hadn't been in contact with anyone that night. Again, we don't know, but I'm just throwing this out there. If she hadn't been in contact with anyone, including her boyfriend, and she was outside alone, it's very possible that someone saw this beautiful young woman who was pregnant and therefore vulnerable and chose to take advantage of her. Maybe someone saw her and took her into human trafficking. She was gorgeous and as disturbing as this might sound, some of these men like pregnant women. So it's not completely unheard of for something like this to have happened to her. Or maybe someone just saw this young, vulnerable woman and took the opportunity to take advantage of her and harm her. 
it's very possible that this could just be a completely random attack. And again, with the very, very small amount of information that we have to go off of, it's not completely unheard of. Now, while we're talking about this theory, I do want to take a moment and talk about the problems Chicago has with violence in general, but especially with women. There is an absurd amount of solved and unsolved cases of women going missing or being killed in the city of Chicago just this year, and we're not even halfway through the year. If you searched into Google missing women in Chicago, there are so many articles that you would find with so many different women, all different cases from the city of Chicago, let alone the entire state of Illinois. It's absolutely disturbing and something needs to be done. Clearly, something happened to Kira and someone knows something. It's absolutely appalling that a woman can go missing in such a huge city, yet we pretty much know nothing. Her case has barely been reported about. Like I said earlier, I tried to look into different articles and different information, but there weren't a lot of articles and there wasn't a lot of videos and every article and every video pretty much said the same thing thing and a lot of people have their theories on why these cases aren't as reported on as others and I'm not going to go into that right now but I think one of the main reasons is simply because of the sheer amount of cases of women going missing. As soon as the media catches wind of a missing woman, the next day there's another case that they have to go and report on. They just simply don't have time to gather enough information about each individual woman that's going missing because there's so many. Not even just talking about here in this case, but none of these missing women are getting the coverage that they need. How are we going to help find these missing women if no one knows about their cases? I don't have the answers on how to solve this crisis, but what I will say is that something needs to be done. As a young woman who lived in Chicago for a number of years, I can say that knowing everything that's happening, I never feel safe walking the streets, even if I'm with someone. It sucks having to be suspicious of every single man or even every woman that you talk to as you're just trying to live your life in the city. Knowing that if I went missing, I may or may not be found because there are several other women that they're still looking for. This is a topic that I can honestly ramble on about for a very long time. So the last thing I want to say about this is, you know, I love the city that I'm from, but there needs to be some major changes. There is way too much violence in that city, whether we're talking about missing women or just violence in general. I don't know how to solve it, but someone needs to step up and figure it out. Kira and her family deserve justice. Kira and her baby deserve to be found and her family deserves to have answers. I hope that by making this video, I can at the very least spread her face and spread her story so that more people can share her story as well. I know I sound like a broken record here, but the amount of information that we have to go off of in this case is so frustrating and I just hope that someone realizes that maybe they saw something, maybe they heard something, maybe they know something and by seeing her story and seeing her face, maybe they'll decide to come forward and share what they know. Again, literally any bit of information, no matter how big or small, can be exactly what this case needed to be solved. If Kira is still out there, she would have a three-month-old baby right now. Kira is described as being black with a medium complexion. She has black hair and brown eyes. She's about five foot four inches and weighs about 125 pounds. Again, if you have absolutely any information in Kira's case, please call the Chicago Police Department at 312-747-8274, or you can call the U.S. Postal Inspection Services at 1-877-876-2455. Both of these phone numbers will be listed in the description below. So that is all I have for today's case. Again, I know it's a shorter video, but her case deserves to be heard and shared. So now I want to ask you guys, what do you think happened to Kira? Do you think that she's still out there somewhere? Do you think that her boyfriend did something to her? Or do you think that she's the unfortunate victim of a random attack? Please let me know in the comments below. So if you like this video, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put up new true crime and mystery videos every single week. 
Also, don't forget to follow my Twitter and Instagram. Both will be linked in the description box below. If you have any case suggestions, please shoot me an email at rachelshannoncases at gmail.com. Most of the cases that I've been covering are suggestions from you guys, including this one. I read every single case suggestion that I get, so please do not be afraid to shoot me an email if you have a case that you would like for me to cover. With that, I hope you guys have a great week, and I hope to see you next time. Bye!